Shalom brothers and sisters. So I just want to make this one very clear and I want to touch on a few difficult issues around the whole Israel situation at the moment in the world. And I just want to put out a couple of hard facts from this ministry so that everyone has a good understanding too. I mean, I, I've even from the beginning of this war that started on that horrifying massacre, people would react and say, what is that trash hanging on your wall? Remove it or free Palestine. You're not going to phase me. Okay, I support Israel even before it was cool and even while it's uncomfortable. I support them because God supports them and has an everlasting covenant with them. He says even the stars and the moon and everything will cease before he forgets his promises to that nation. And he has clearly and openly in front of my eyes shown how he has blessed that land, how he has brought them back, how he has established them, how he has defended them in wars that should have wiped them out multiple times. And now his hand is their actual iron dome. He has proven this time and time again. And it's not by their works. It's not by them believing in Yeshua or not. For they do many wicked things. Absolutely. And they have much sin and they walk in darkness. It is not about them. It is about God. And the land also is not about them. It belongs originally to God. It is where he has placed his name, literally carved it into the hills and the city of Jerusalem. This is where he will return and put his feet down there where his feet left the ground on the Mount of Olives. There when he comes in seven years time, his feet will touch down again. Nowhere else, not California, not Cape Town, not Maui, nowhere else. Mount of Olives. Jerusalem. It is important to God, so it is important to me, and I will pray for his people, and I will support Israel and stand with them regardless of the backlash of an evil, dark world. Because I do not fear man, I fear God. And by fear God, I don't mean scared and cower in a corner, I mean I fear him on a deep level. I know who he is. I respect him. I cower and bow down before him in humble, absolute love and adoration. I seek to be so close to him. My fear is to be removed from his presence and not be in his presence. So, even when it's uncomfortable, I will be standing, and so will my household, with Israel. In South Africa, they've had a very good example now in the last two days, and I want to share it with you. As the world says, look at this as an amazing example of how it should be. And I'm going to tell you as a pastor why it shouldn't be. Okay, because number one, it's pushing for the one world faith, one world religion. So Pope Francis sitting in the Vatican on the toilet going, Woo! so happy that these things are happening. I'm not because I see where it's leading to. And God is a jealous God. There is one way to heaven and that is through Jesus Christ, his son. There isn't many paths. And he's not going to embrace Islam and Buddhism and Sheikhism and all these other things and say, cool, all of you can get to heaven. No, that is not how it works. You cannot have a house divided against itself because it will fall. There is no one between religions. So in South Africa, in Cape Town, the Islamic community, the Jews, Judaism group, right, representing the Jews, supposedly, and a bunch of Christians all got together at a mosque. And celebrated the lighting of a Hanukkah candle. And on the candle it says cease fire. Now a couple of things. I have a problem with the multi-faiths together. Sorry, not interested. You serve your demons somewhere else. Here we serve the true God. There is no connection between them. No way. Darkness and light do not commingle. Not going to happen. So that's my first problem. My second problem is the venue is the mosque. So again, you're at the wrong place. You're not even in the right place. And then you go and desecrate the candles by putting ceasefire on it. So now it's a political thing, not anything to do with religion or faith or anything holy. Nothing. So you've destroyed everything in the form of cohabiting and being unionized together and love and all these wonderful things that the world says it is, which it actually isn't. It is leading to your destruction. And because you're not willing to stand for the truth, it leads to this. And they want to push this. And they're going to have another session again in a few days' time in Cape Town. And it's just crazy. How's that even? Anyway, no. 
Choose your side and stick with it and have the ability to stick with it right through to the end. And there is only one right side, the side of Jesus Christ, Yahweh, the Bible. Every other side is wrong. The path is wide to all the other paths because the devil has been populating the world with false religions, but very narrow to the truth. And people don't want the truth because in the light, all your deeds are made evident and people are happy with their deeds in the darkness where they think no one sees, but everybody sees. They'll find out soon enough. So that's my biggest problem. My other problem is there is a lot of anger and grief and frustration in Israel, specifically by Jews that are felt by them, and that is unfortunately spilling over into a non-Christian approach. Now, I pray for Israel. I pray for the Jews. I pray for their hearts to soften, their eyes to open, and them to experience their Messiah, and that the Lord will help them and deal with their grief and all these things. I pray for the Gaza Strip residents too, the Palestinians. I pray for all of them that they will come to a saving grace of Jesus. And we've seen miracles being performed and everything. I pray that the Lord works miracles even in the ranks of Hamas and all these Arab countries that his name will be known because that is what we're about. We're about making Jesus known. Now I've heard it say, said by some that are Christians, you know, if you don't stand with Israel, you're definitely not going to heaven. You're definitely not going in the rapture. Or if you don't stand with the Jews, you're going to hell. I don't see that in the Bible. Yes, Christians can make mistakes. Yes, they can be deceived and swept up on the wrong side. Is that going to lead them to hell? Can they not be helped and brought back? Jesus himself, when he has been crucified by the Jews and the Gentiles, says what? They're all going to hell. None of them are going to make it to heaven. No, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He's still at that moment of the most horrific torture and death for us. They're still full of grace and mercy and love, not only for his own, the Jews, but for all the Romans, all the Gentiles, all that hate him. Even Peter that denied him three times could be restored. For all, he is still saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And in the same way we pray, Father, enlighten them. Show them the truth. Guide them through your infallible word and teach them. And, and with love, just show them what they need to see. Let your light shine into their lives. Let them experience Jesus Christ. Because the closer you draw to Jesus, the more everything else will fall in line. So allow us now to emulate, emulate Christ Jesus and seek to walk as the water walker walked. Let us seek to have that same mercy and love and prayer for everybody, regardless of their feelings towards us or how they rail and rage against us from the darkness. We pray for their salvation. We pray for the light to break through and break down those walls. We pray for victory in Jesus' name for every single soul that can be snatched from darkness. Always make sure that our focus is the focus of Jesus and that we walk in encouragement with one another. We strengthen one another. We go to God with our grief, our anger, and our frustrations, and we allow Him to deal with those things before we deal with the world, so that we may not shine incorrectly, but that we may shine correctly and show His light, not our frailties and failures. God bless. Keep looking up. Keep praying for Israel. Many miracle stories coming out on both sides still all the time. And keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. And very shortly, we will meet in the air. Shalom.